Tire pressure service. No messages. That's good. Service tire pressure system. And left front is reading zero. Uh, right front is reading 54, which is below the threshold of 60. I think it's 65. Um, left rear isn't even registering and right rear is registering because that's about what I have in about 55. So let's change the, I don't know, let's change the left rear and uh, see if this fixes it. Can we mark the valve stem? And I just went ahead and put some way over here inside the tread just in case I rub this off while I'm trying to break the bead. I'll pull the valve stem. My jack is still underneath the differential. That tire is on the ground over there. Um, so I just laid the tire underneath here. I'm going to try to go off the bottom of this leaf spring. It'll probably give a little bit there. But the truck's pretty heavy. I'm trying to just line this up right on the edge of there by feel. And um, hopefully I can break the bead here and push it down far enough that I can get to the sensor right here. And this won't be in the way. So I'm trying to just orient everything so that... Um, I can work on the sensor from this side and I'm not breaking the bead here and then this is in my way and then I have to hold it out of the way. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Now I'm trying to do this with just the bottle, with the, just a little bottle jack that comes with the truck. And of course I have a bottle jack, a hydraulic bottle jack in the garage. I could also just leave this on the jack stand and use the tire jack. There's lots of ways to break beads. Um, we're just going to try this. These tires have been on here about 20,000 miles. So I think I changed the new tires to these at 72,000. There's about 90 on it now. So 18,000 or so. So it would have been a lot easier to face this part this direction toward where i have the camera but just for ease of turning but this is what i worried about because the jack is longer this way than it is this way i worried that this would hang over too much and then i'd hit the rim and you can see i'm just barely missing the rim right there with this edge of the jack so the bead sliding down the wheel just hasn't popped over yet Well, I just did a couple more cranks and went pop, pop. So that gives me a lot of room there. I might go ahead and try to wedge in a two by four here. Okay, so just kind of wedged in a little two by four there. Now, it does look like there's a... It looks like a Torx, doesn't it? Okay, so we can try to pull that out. Um, and then I think I'm gonna end up cutting this valve stem to get it out because this is not the unscrew type. Even as low profile as this is, that doesn't fit in there. I can try to jam this down further, um, but I think I can get away with just using this. This is a T10. That's what feels like it fits it. And I'm just gonna use a quarter inch wrench underneath it. Hopefully this will work out okay. It'll be slow, but. Don't drop this tip inside your tire. You'd be mad later. Okay, I suppose I could tape that there and then it wouldn't fall in. I just don't have the patience for that. So I went ahead and just pushed it down a little bit further. This seems to fit in now. Let's see if it comes out a little easier now. Now I can do it by hand. I don't know which of these is going to work better. Now 
Now, had I ordered the new factory sensors, I could probably just screw them on, right? And leave these valve stems in place. And that might be advantage of spending the extra money on the new sensors. We're going to see also if the um, computer relearns these generic sensors at 433 megahertz. And so we're going to put one on right here and check it out. Okay, so I just cut that part off right there. And um, then the valve stem popped through. But it would be nice just to take the new factory sensor, take off the old one, put the new one on. Some people are taking these apart, I guess, and putting in new batteries. And we want to make sure that this hole all looks clean and good. So I'm going to get some cleaner and clean that out there. And also right there, this is a brake cleaner, but ugh, there's a lot of crud in there. It didn't look that dirty to me. Okay, just using this or a screwdriver or whatever just to jam down there and try to get in all the little nooks and crannies okay so here they come in a package of four and four hundred thirty three megahertz dual frequency and there's the part number kx dash so three three Has that same dumb screw. I wonder if that would have fit on the new one. Boy, that might have saved me some work. Might save me some work on the other ones. Okay. Looks like it has a nice seal though. So I'm just going through the instructions. They're all well written. It all, you know flows in English. It's not so stuttery like it was translated directly from another language. So they're saying eight to ten year battery life. I don't know. You know the factory ones, this truck's I bought in 2012, early 2012, and it's 2021 now. So you know it's gone for a few years. So I thought this company, you know, I actually got on their website and I was surprised how many different things they make. They don't just make these TPMS sensors. They make uh, some other backup cameras and some other stuff. So, but it doesn't say anything about here. It just says deflate the tire, dismount the tire, remove the factory old sensor, aluminum valve stem, clamp in, install new valve stem, washer, nut cap, locate the sensor body to other end of the blah, blah, blah. Hence, tighten the screw to 19 inch pounds, which we can do. We'll get a little torque wrench, a baby torque wrench we can use. Um, so that's the aluminum valve stem. Uh, carefully remount the tire without damaging the installed sensor. Installed, inflate the tire to suggest pressure on the tire placard. Okay, and that's about it. So it doesn't say anything about pushing anything to start it or anything like that. So hopefully this is the auto relearn, the plug and play style relearn. Simply drive the car for roughly 10 to 15 minutes under 35 miles an hour or above. I think it means at 35 miles an hour or above. The vehicle will pick up the new sensors automatically. Okay, let's hope that's the case. Okay, so it's 11 millimeter fits nicely so we'll use that this is a micro torque wrench the lowest setting is 25 inch pounds we're going to roll it to 25 inch pounds right there with the zero then we're going to roll it back five that's this is at its limit of being able to torque so this is probably not going to be very accurate the best right your best uh accuracy is going to be in the middle of your range here so but this is probably keep me hopefully keep me from breaking it off Okay, I want to take my time here and just try to feel it and make sure it feels like it's seating, that it's not getting crooked. Let's just loosen it one more time, in fact. And... Yep.
Okay, that's it right there. <laughs> You know, I can't wiggle it around back here. That feels nice and sturdy. I'm, I'm, okay. I thought that might be, feel chintzy, but that feels, you know, it feels very strong. It's not wiggling around. Hopefully that'll make a good seal. We're gonna find out here in a few minutes. Now, as far as the size of these go, you know, I'll compare them later on the bench for you, but it's a little bit smaller. It seems to fit maybe as flush, I guess. Okay, we're just gonna blow the trash out of the, blow the trash out of the. Yep. Now, get rid of that. So get rid of this now. Good. Let's uh, lube this up and get the bead back on, get it aired up. Got our Yamaha brand of soap. Just going to stand this up and hopefully we can make a seal here. Okay, that's a tiny bit better. You can still see the inside of the valve stem there, but it's really close. I'm going to spray some soap and see if we can get a good seal here. That sounds pretty good, actually. Tire's still, real, tire's still real soft there, 15 pounds. That got it seated, let's air it up. And these back ones, I think I was putting 55 in them, so we'll put 55 in it. It's about 55. Now, what I want to know is spray some soap water there. I don't see any bubbles. It's good. Okay. And we'll just kind of make a little bit of a bubble over that, like that, just to make sure the core is not leaking. It looks good to me. Okay. You can see my line is still lined up. I knew the back bead would most likely stay on uh, the bottom bead, but um, just a little paranoid. So I like to just kind of make sure that nothing moved. Okay.
vibration. It doesn't. I don't think it's out of balance. I don't feel any vibration at all. And now it changed its mind. It's reading 57, which is probably closer to what I put in it because I thought I'd put about 56 on that little gauge. And that little gauge, even though it's a cheap one, was has been pretty accurate for me in comparison when I compare it to other gauges at least. Okay, now we just got to fix some others. You can see that other one that was reading on the driver's front. They're just all wacky now. 